Hello and welcome to another installment of Conflict on Camera. This is an occasional series of little short films that look at iconic photos from World War II and the stories behind them. And today we are talking about the first transport to Auschwitz. So it's a slightly gloomy subject, but to brighten up the subject, we have Alina from Poland joining us to talk about the transport. Good afternoon, Alina. Hi, Paul. Thank you for, I'm so excited to be here to do this. So thank you for inviting me. Well, it's good to have you. And for those watching, Alina is World War II girl on Twitter. She does her Auschwitz podcast and she is one half of the phenomenal history hack. So we are in good, capable hands today to discuss this. So we are talking about the photo that's going to be on the screen now. And it is a group of people being moved down the road by the Germans. So I'm going to hand over to Alina to explain exactly what the, is going on the photo, when it was taken and the backstory behind it. So what are we looking at, Alina? So we are looking at a photo taken on the 14th of June, 1940. I was going to say, Paul, can you guess what's happening in this photo? Um, we pretty much explained what we're looking at. A group of men, actually 728 men. Actually, sorry, let me rephrase that because um, I am being incorrect. It's 758 men that were taken to the train station. And at the train station, a couple of men were taken away from the transport and only 728 of them make it to Auschwitz. So the first transport. This is a street in Tarnow, which is slightly east of Krakow for people who want to understand their geography a little bit. And we're looking at Krakowska Street. And if you look really, really far back, we have a church on the left hand side, which I'll, I'll come back to the church. Um, but even further, if you can kind of see all the end column of people just up there on the right hand side is actually where my family lived which is really interesting because my uh, great uncle or great great uncle I, I get lost now these days of how you you know call people these days uh, in in family but he was uh seven years old and he actually watched this transport walk past the window and at this point there were you can see there's no people on the streets you can see the ss men the soon to become prisoners and that's it. I mean, I, it was this was early in the morning as well, but there was a, a a law that was brought out that if you were seen out on the streets, they they would arrest you. You'd be gone. But the secret thing that was happening at that point is what the prisoners would report in their memoirs and and statements and things. You'd sometimes see a hand waving from the window. Is that someone saying goodbye to a loved one? Because there were people from Tarnov on this transport. Um, my grandfather, great grandfather's brother-in-law, for example, he was in this transport. Or were they just saying goodbye in general? And the one thing about this is these men have no idea where they're going. Absolutely none. Zero. All they know is they're going somewhere. No, nobody at this point knows what Auschwitz is or what Auschwitz is going to become. So I, I actually look at this photo and I think the, the naivety of these men of where they're about to go and about half of them are going to die within mm. the next five months. So Alina, you, you obviously know an incredible amount about the story of Auschwitz and how it all came to, to begin this program, but you just said about the naivety of the people in that photo, but what was actually the planning behind it? What had been decided? How were these people selected? And what did the authorities know was going to happen to these people? Uh, so the bottom line is uh, this, they were going to a concentration camp, a newly created concentration camp, because at this point, the prisons were overflowing in occupied Poland, in the Third Reich parts of Poland, parts that were incorporated into Third Reich. And there's nowhere for these people to go. They're sitting in, for example, a four man cell and there's 20 of them. So at this point, the prisons are so overcrowded and they can't even send these people to other concentration camps, for example, Dachau, Dachau at this point is at its maximum capacity. And they don't have enough resources and enough time to build what they need, the barracks and things to expand the, expand the camp. So they decided to build another concentration camp on, on former Polish soil. And Oświęcim actually is at this point incorporated into Third Reich. It is right on the border between the Third Reich and the general government which is occupied Poland. So these men sent there, um, to be honest, I really don't know why they were chosen. We don't know why they were chosen. They were just chosen. My speculation is, is that they were chosen because they were the ones who were the most risk at this point. 
that they were had a better chance of escaping. They were trying to join the Polish army abroad that were in Romania and Hungary at the time. And people who were basically not what the Reich wanted them to be. They were part of the underground system. They were having scouting movements. They were doing things that were basically illegal at the time. So fittish young men at this point, or not so much young men, but capable men who, who could be a danger to the Third Reich. So let's get rid of them. That's what you're saying, yeah? Yeah, except for, I'm going to throw this one at you. The youngest, I'm going to say, I'm going to say man in quotation marks here, in this transport was 14. Wow. What does a 14 year old, how does a, I mean, a 14 year old could pose risk in, in, in a certain amount of time, but at this point in the war, what is a 14 year old doing? I mean, there's two testimonies that talk about this young man and they both say that he saw, because he was from Tarnoff and he saw his mother from the train and he was crying. He's a 14 year old child. But for those who would like to know, he does survive. He escapes in the end. So remind us again, what date was his photo taken? 14th of June, 1940, in the early hours of the morning. So of these 728 uh, who boarded the train, what do we think the survival rate was? So 325 of them survive. 292, we know for a fact, perished. But there's also that 111 that we don't know about. So it's approximately, I'd say about 40, I think it's 45% if you work it out in percentages, actually survive. There's a whole other different kettle of fish to why this transport survives more than, for example, I don't know, the 7th or the 20th or transports from 42, 43, 44. But this, this has probably the most highest survival rate. And why for you is the first transport not necessarily the most interesting, but the one that you have spent a lot of time studying? There's two reasons for that. Uh, one is a family tie. So as I mentioned previously, my great grandfather's brother-in-law was on this transport. So, and he perishes. Uh, he perishes in uh, on the 12th of February, 1942. So that anniversary will be coming up in the next month or so. Um, hopefully the museums will be able to reopen and I'll be able to go and lay flowers as I do every year at the crematorium. And secondly, in all honesty, it was a subject I've always wanted to work on Auschwitz and it's something I worked on for my master's and I was searching and searching for an idea and I came to my supervisor's office, uh, Nicholas Wachschmann, I sat in his office, I gave this long list of different topics I could study and I said I'm really interested in this transport because the survival rate is quite high. We know and know a lot about this transport and we could probably put something together because there's been nothing really written. They're mentioned in history books here and there. So there's um, a very small paragraph in Lawrence Reese's book or a, a, a sentence here, a sentence there. And I thought these guys deserve, I mean, everybody deserves to be remembered, but I'm going to start somewhere. So I'm going to start at the beginning. And I think from my point of view, that's what makes it interesting because we tend to think of the Holocaust in the, ten, in the, in the sense of the final result of X number killed but we forget that it had to start somewhere. All of these programs, all the death camps, all of the programs began somewhere. And so there's something interesting at looking back at where it began in this particular transport, beginning this terrible story of Auschwitz. And also the fact that it's putting identity to some of the people and, and talking about 14 year old young men. And Because when you look at 11 million as a figure, it's just too difficult to take it on board. You need to kind of bring it down to smaller groups to make it make any some sense in your head. So any other details about that photo you think we should know? Well, you can't see actually in the photograph um, is about half a dozen Jews that were on the transport as well. Uh, we can't forget them. They were also involved. And to be honest, we don't know the final number. Again, we have missing records. People sometimes hid their identity. I've, there's, a, there's a couple of uh, memoirs that I've come across where for example, some of the women hid that they were Jewish and they passed themselves off as Poles and that gave them a better chance of survival. Um, so yeah, they, they also deserve to be mentioned. But I also want to just underline that point that they were arrested because they were Poles, not because the Holocaust hadn't even started at this, well, hold on, let me scratch that. The Holocaust at this point was slowly on its way, but they weren't arrested because they were Jewish, they were arrested because they were Poles. I think this has been an interesting uh, show. It's a little bit of a bleak subject, but it's to spend time talking about one of these iconic photos I think is worth doing. So Alina, thank you very much for joining me on this one.
and the links below in the description you can find out about Lena's podcasts and her work and her her research and her Twitter and account and what have you and you can find all that in the links below thank you for joining us Lena we'll see you again on another show I'm sure very shortly amazing thank you so much